Stu Gatz here, guys. Mother's Day is coming up pretty quick. Whether it's your mom, your wife, or your sister, all moms need to hear they are appreciated and know that they are loved. So show how much you care to the lady who taught you everything you know about caring with a Hallmark card. From sweet to sentimental to laugh out loud funny, Hallmark has a card that will help you put your love for mom into words and let her know how much she matters. It's your way of saying thank you for all the sleepless nights and selfless acts of love. Go out and find the perfect Hallmark Mother's Day card today. You can find them wherever Hallmark cards are sold. Stu Gatz here for Dell. There's nothing small about your business. It takes a lot of hard work, and it makes a huge difference. As a thank you, during Small Business Month, Dell is offering up to 40% off select PCs with 8th Gen Intel Core processors. Plus, get a free external hard drive with select PC purchases. Simple to get. Call 877-BY-DELL to speak with a small business technology advisor today. That's 877-BY-DELL. One more time. Check them out today. It's 877-BY-DELL. This is the Dan Lebator Show with the Stugatz Podcast. Rough weekend for Skip Bayless. <laughs> LeBron James... He cornered the market on LeBron James' criticism. LeBron James is soft. LeBron James is mentally frail. It was only a rough weekend if LeBron was indeed aiming glass. Uh, Um, That was fairly amazing to watch. We will talk about that because I thought that Miami had gotten the best years of LeBron James' basketball career. But somehow... And this is somewhere between improbable and inexplicable. Somehow he rages on, never missing games, never missing minutes, uh, never hurt in any way, and always <laughs> at the end of games, the most physical, absurd force at the end of games that there exists. Yeah. Uh, played 82 games this year. At the age of 34, which is incredible. But you think that maybe the Cavs are getting better years than the Heat got with LeBron, the four years the well, Heat got with LeBron? What I'm saying is that he's still in his prime. There's no yeah, dis- there, there, yeah. What I'm saying is I thought his prime was over, and his prime is not. And that it's weird to me at 34 when you say, is he 34? Is he now 34? I think you're making him older than he is. He's not 34 yet. Uh, I believe he's 34. I'll check on it right now. Uh, um, but you said the word incredible. He is 33. Uh, you said the word incredible, which is a compliment, but is also not credible. So I ask you this question, because usually in sports, when something, man, we are skeptical, right? We are cynical. At this point, when Lance Armstrong and Barry Bonds and baseball use steroids as medicine, at this point, if I tell you that anyone is going through the pharmacy or stem cells or Germany or, you know, changing their blood around, you, you'd be like, yeah, of course, they're if LeBron James is spending $1.5 million in the offseason on his body, right. $1.5 million, mm-hmm. and you're in the face of something that is, as you describe it, incredible, my question to you is this. Would the NBA even be interested in looking into anything around LeBron James that would invite skepticism? Would the NBA welcome that news or would the nba just look the other way because of how badly the league needs him uh they need him badly they look the other way i think why would you want to do that i mean he's playing at such a high level the eastern conference is so bad there are two teams that everyone thinks can win the nba championship and then you have this team out east who has this great player and can the great player beat the great team why would you do that let me put this in the proper context. your business let me put this in the proper context okay because i feel like many of you will just hear what i'm saying and say there's that hater lebitard that crybaby anti lebron he is smearing him no this is not what i intend to do so let me give Give you some proper context here. I think LeBron James is the single greatest basketball player I have ever seen. He does all the things Michael Jordan does, and he does them 60 pounds heavier and a couple of inches taller. I believe he is Michael Jordan, and he's made of so much muscle that there isn't a precedent in the history of the sport for him. I am one of the biggest supporters of him and his greatness because I believe he is a master artist, that he has perfected and sculpted the craft in a way no one before him has. No one, not a person to dribble a basketball, has mastered the things that he has mastered. 
And so within that, you're now witnessing a guy who was questioned at every turn, putting in a season that is improbable with the amount of mileage that he has on his body, that he's never hurt. I happen to know the people that LeBron works with. Okay. I happen to know them as their na- former Navy. One of them's a former Navy SEAL. These people do all the things to the body that Tom Brady is doing to the body. It is a heightened sense of physical vigilance in terms of taking care of that body. I know those people to be reputable. So I don't want anyone to infer from this conversation that I'm accusing LeBron James of something. What I am saying is when you are met with something that you describe as incredible, that is impossible to understand how player X stays that kind of great, that late in age, whether it's Tom Brady with a doctor who's not a doctor or anyone else in sports who's arriving at greatness. Usually this gets messed with cynicism. Yes. If Tiger Woods right now, if you heard he was doing HGH, you'd sort of be like, I kind of get that. He's been in pain. He's not what he was. He's looking for a fountain of youth. You could get it at a lot of clinics if you're not right. a golfer or not reg- you know, within the regimen of drug rules. I'd also be okay with it because Tiger's back playing golf. Okay, so but what I'm asking you is this question. I'm not asking you the question of, because this is how baseball was complicit with this kind of stuff. Performance enhancers rescued baseball, turned baseball into the mutation you see today where guys are just swinging for 60 homers. And when faced with something like this from a great athlete, you remember Cal Ripken Jr., uh, the the big season All-Star game. He hits a home run in the All-Star game. People said, well, that's too good to be true. Chan Ho Park threw that on purpose right down the middle. Yep. Grooved it. Was it Chan Ho Park? It was Chan Ho Park. Grooved it. Yep. Accused him of soiling the moment. What I'm asking you is... I did that, and I still believe that to be so, yeah. What I'm asking you specifically, though, is as it relates to basketball, would basketball even want to know? If I told you... You could read some of the reports here on on baseball getting trying to get to the bottom right. of of the Miami biogenesis scandal, which was just a ridiculous, I mean, it was a Cuban cartoon. It was a, the height of absurdity, all of that, that, that infiltrate, that biogenesis, speaking of doctors who are not doctors, that biogenesis would become the clown show that it was that would help, you know, help Manny Ramirez make all of that money and Alex Rodriguez make all of that money and Ryan Braun make all of that money my if the, the way i believe there are reports roy can you look this up for me please if you don't mind i believe there are reports of major league baseball coming down here and conducting an investigation as if it was a legal arm <laughs> i believe they did yeah. with with straight clown <laughs> yes. show stuff all right. over the place yeah. that you can read about and uh, and roy is finding us but you have painted an interesting picture here and scenario at least for me because i love this stuff so someone walks up like a deputy under adam silver and he's got a manila envelope yes. and it's on, and he knocks on the door does and says, silver want to see it adam does silver want to see it is what I i'm asking i got some jaw dropping stuff here on the bro- nope. i got pictures <laughs> i got quotes i got it's in this envelope all you have to do is open it up how does silver I'm respond asking you at this point given that the testing for hgh is terrible given that i don't believe unless it's recently mike does the nba even test for hgh given that hgh is a healer a healer and a helper that many of these guys don't even use it for strength they just use it to have the strength to play 162 games in baseball to get up every day and do a physical job that hurts in 2015, they started rolling out uh, HGH testing. My guess, and so what I'm asking you here, Mike, is has one of those HGH testers gotten around to LeBron's locker? Because I just wouldn't send him over there if I ran that league. I don't want to know. At the time, LeBron, when they announced this, LeBron was quoted as saying it shouldn't be a problem. No, I mean, yeah, because he knows. <laughs> what do you want him to say? <laughs> no, Damn. No, no, but what I'm saying is, no, but what he has to say that it shouldn't be a problem. And then the next thing he's doing is taking up one of those burner phones and calling Silver and being, Adam, it shouldn't be a problem, right? That's what I think he was saying, Mike. That's why I pointed it out. You want the quote to just be a gulp? No, I wanted it to just be that, regardless if I'm doing it or not. It shouldn't be a problem. Okay. And again, I will say again, 
I'm posing this as you know how they in fiction sometimes they take true events but they change the names to protect both the people and the film. I'm using a hypothetical example here to just talk about if you had someone who helped your sport that much, because you need the Raptors out of here. You need that game to end like that. You, 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 you need him. You need him. You need him to get to whatever awaits in the West, because you certainly don't want the Celtics or the Raptors. Ben Simmons himself doesn't want any part of that game. Hi, everyone. Stu Gatz here. Support for the Dan Levitard Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you're confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, and your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you that same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. With Rocket Mortgage, you can apply simply and understand fully so you can mortgage confidently. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash Stu Gatz, S-T-U-G-O-T-Z, Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org number 3030. Don Lebatard. I mean, <laughs> what just an this? asinine thing that Disney pays us for. <laughs> just asinine. Thank you. Stugatz. It's a clerical error, man. <laughs> this is arriving at an accountant's desk in Disney, and then it's, wait a minute, how much is this costing us? Why? More, please. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. All right, so here are the three paragraphs I call this segment reading from the New York Times article, Baseball Pays for Clinic Documents Tied to Doping Case. Major League Baseball's investigation of an anti-aging clinic linked to performance-enhancing drugs has taken a new turn with the commissioner's office paying a former employee of the facility for documents related to the case. At the same time, two people briefed on the matter said at least one player linked to the clinic has purchased documents from a former clinic employee in order to destroy them. So I want you to imagine this happening in Miami, okay, because this is where all this weird bleep happens. <laughs> we got a clinic that's not a clinic run by a doctor who's not a doctor who's giving drugs that, uh, you know, baseball has a tough time testing for to players, and the denials are comical. Ryan Braun's is an epic for all time. Can you get that, Mike? I mean, this this is guilty of sin, and you just need to get Ryan Braun's angry uh, denial that he ever used steroids when he was guilty of sin. Sold me, man. I was so convinced. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's one of the best ever. I mean, it was better it was better than Rafael Palmero with the B12 or Sammy Sosa forgetting how to speak English or Mark McGuire. I'm not here to talk about the past. Ryan Braun went face first into the buzzsaw. With denials that were strident. Didn't you get on everyone around here for saying that Ryan Braun actually cheated? You're like, no, no. You can't. I believe I was. I believe I was that kind of naive. I believe I also uh, believe the right. The I just didn't believe that anybody would get in front of the cameras and lie quite that overtly. I think what happened was Aaron Rodgers was a good friend, a business partner of Ryan Braun, and he went to bat for Ryan Braun, saying no way, and stayed in business. And Dan loves Aaron Rodgers, no, and therefore, no, that's the way you do business. I was just doing innocent until proven guilty, and then uh, being swayed uh, by someone's uh, strident, obnoxious denial. Dumb me. Uh, I forgot that whole Rogers Ryan Braun thing. It ruined their friendship. Yeah, it did. Don't talk anymore. It did. But I want you to picture this. Major League Baseball paying God knows how much to somebody who runs one of these clinics. And again, my Mike, I what I'm pushing in your face that's not in front of the nation's face is you know it's someone like DJ Khaled. Like if I, this these clinics these clinics down here, I mean, I believe we lead the country. Florida leads the country in fraud. Every DJ down here is also a pharmacist. The idea that Major League Baseball was running through one of these clinics, <laughs> run by one of these doctors who is not a doctor. Please find that Ryan Braun denial. I'm going to keep reading this. The unusual battle, according to the two people, also appears to involve efforts by other players tied to the clinic to buy potentially incriminating documents and keep them out of the hands of baseball's investigators got a bidding war between baseball's investigators and baseball players who didn't want the paper trail <laughs> trying to buy documents from people like DJ Khaled. And then baseball has no subpoena power. So I want you to imagine that. Baseball with no real power wandering around trying to solve the Miami biogenesis scandal and having to go through live at the, in the middle of the night to find who they got to talk to. 
And a lot of you are getting mad because you think I'm accusing LeBron James of something. I'm not, man. I'm not. I am a big admirer of this guy, and I am on record in every way as saying that I don't care how many advantages competitionaholics are looking for. Of course, they're going to look for all the advantages that keep predators at bay. Right. I mean, listen, I'm with you on it. Like, I don't. First off, Dan is not suggesting or not saying that he is. He's asking a question. And I'm fine with athletes using it because, like, Barry Bond stuck around 10 years longer than he's supposed okay. to, Dan, than he but should hold have. Hold on. I'm not even talking about steroids. I don't want to go down this conversation of kids shouldn't be using steroids. I'm talking about the advancements, the right. HGH. I'm talking about the idea that you can do all sorts of things to to improve your performance that might be on the edge of medicine, on the edge of science, and on the edge of the rules. And... Stugatz is just saying, I'm not even interested in that part of it. What I'm interested in is the next part of it. What does the NBA do if anywhere close to this investigation? Because I don't think the NBA does this, pays a Miami clinic for, for information. Stugatz said that Stugatz in the, in, because Stugatz loves the movies and wants everything in life to be the movies. This is the, this is the picture that Stugatz painted during the break. Go ahead. You paint the picture. Guys, tell me I'm wrong. Go ahead and tell me I'm wrong. I dare you to tell me that the picture I painted for Dan during the break is wrong. This is what Stugat said, and it made me laugh out loud. He said, let's just say, hypothetically, somebody comes to Adam Silver's office with a manila envelope filled with incri- incriminating evidence about one of his giant stars that's uh, saving the league. <laughs> Boss, this is the only copy copy of this stuff. I hand it over to you. Stugat said Adam Silver would say, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Close the door and immediately Frisbee style hurl that file into a fireplace. Yep. <laughs> First off, you imagine Adam Silver to have a fireplace in his office, right? But Stugat didn't even have him looking at it. Stugat <laughs> didn't even have him looking at the file. He just had him Frisbee tossing it into a roaring fireplace. It's the LeBron file. And yes, he tells his deputy to leave and then he just slings it like a disc, like a Frisbee into the fireplace. And that's it. And it's the only copy. And, you know, no one ever knows of that conversation. Why would you expose LeBron James? He's your entire league. Why would you do that if you're Adam Silver? Would you have any interest in doing that? Um, so again, this is why I was fooled by the Ryan Braun denial. Okay. <laughs> Ryan Braun is, is here is as guilty as the devil. Okay. As gu- guilty as the devil himself. But you tell me if he's not persuasive here and telling you that he's not the devil. I've tried to respect this process, even though the confidentiality of the process was breached early on. I've tried to handle the entire situation with honor, with integrity, with class, with dignity, and with professionalism because that's who I am, and that's how I've always lived my life. If I had done this intentionally or unintentionally, I'd be the first one to step up and say, I did it. By no means am I perfect. But if I've ever made any mistakes in my life, I've taken responsibility for my actions. I truly believe in my heart, and I would bet my life that this substance never entered my body at any point. <laughs> I mean, that's a persuasive. Yeah. Didn't a urine collector lose a job over that? I don't know. There was some sort of controversy with a urine collector. Yeah, he threw him under the bus, and the urine collector ended up losing his job. Now, Braun, many years later, went back and had dinner with the urine collector. And <laughs> what a beautiful story. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> 30 for 30. It was Sal. Yeah. Buy low. Sell high. Time for some ads. I want you to imagine Major League Baseball and Ryan Braun both trying to purchase his urine back. <laughs> Capital One is making it easier for you to look up past purchases on your car. We keep telling you about Capital One at every turn. Braun uh, tried to discredit the urine collector by saying he was anti-Semitic. <laughs> also suspended for 65 games. <laughs> <laughs> Despite that denial, boom, 65 games, not even 50. Get out of here. 15 more for all those lies you told at the end. <laughs> but he sewed it all off. Anti-Semitic. <laughs> the anti-Semitic urine collector was wronged. Dino Lorenzi. Oh, we're so sorry, Dino, for bringing this whole thing back up. Don Libertard. Let me go around the shipping container filled with frightened refugees. What do you imagine Pitbull smells like? The bidding starts with Fats and Info. I think he smells like my dad's cologne. 
Guillermo, what do you imagine Pitbull smells like? A combination of sweat and like agua de violeta. <laughs> oh, nice. Stugats. Roy, what do you got there? Dracar Noir. Mike, what about you? What would be your guess on what Pitbull smells like? Fireball. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This is the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. We'll get to the only hockey sound you need in a second. But is Sylvester Stallone over 70? He's 71 years old. Yep. Come on, man. What Guillermo, mean? put it on the poll. Did you think that Rambo would still be in the game? At 71 years old. <laughs> Since we're discussing former uh, performance-enhancing stories from yesteryear, you want to revisit the uh, Stallone uh, balcony in Australia story. It was either Australia or Alaska. I get them confused sometimes. And agents were flooding his hotel room, and he was hurling HGH from the balcony, reportedly. <laughs> he gets to make Rambo 5. <laughs> You yell at me if I suggest that Adam Silver would throw him an envelope with incriminating HGH evidence on one of his stars in a fireplace like a Frisbee. <laughs> Leans back in his chair. Yeah. One of, just throws that. So how do you have it? Fire. Do you have it like an overhand Frisbee toss or like an underhand Frisbee toss? He t- It's overhand. He takes the corner of the manila envelope, all right, just the corner, and, and, and he flicks it right into the fireplace, and it's gone. And yeah. the envelope has written in a Sharpie HGH evidence on it. <laughs> Because that's how the biogenesis scandal probably went about. <laughs> Can you give me the details on Stallone in that balcony? I just want to hear. I I would love to interview him about this. Like, what does Sylvester Stallone think? He's on the phone. He's saying, yeah, I think I can get Rambo 5 done. How old are you, Sylvester? I'm 71. He was found guilty of importing human growth hormone into Australia. He was found guilty. What do you mean he was found guilty? He was found in his hotel room, and by extension, he's guilty. He's guilty of being Sylvester Stallone. Found guilty? Just watch one of his movies. Witnesses, uh, officials later witnessed him drop four vials of hormone testosterone from his hotel balcony before authorities could search his suite. Yes. They found 48 vials in his luggage. <laughs> so wait a minute he was just he getting done with the him. discarding wow they caught him quick he only got rid of four of them he had 48 more to go he was just gonna throw in the pool <laughs> <laughs> the actor uh wrote to authorities to apologize for his quote terrible mistake <laughs> okay i need more information on this also we are trying to find that anti-semitic urine collector <laughs> we want that's to talk slandered. to him. Yeah, slandered. Yeah, yeah. He's not actually anti-Semitic. He was just accused of it by Ryan Braun, who was trying to avoid a 65-game suspension <laughs> in the most <laughs> creative ways that he could find. <laughs> Smears the urine collector. Just, the, I mean, that was a shocker. It was when he throws out the anti-Semitic card. And I think anti-Semitic Cubs fan, right? Was the urine collector? Yeah, Dino Lorenzi. They patched it all up with a little dinner a couple of, couple of months later. The Bronze and the Lorenzis. <laughs> all right, so here's the only hockey sound you need. Apropos of nothing, the Golden Knights advance. They are America's team. They are our team. Uh, they are the most uh, fun and surprising thing in sports. I've been told that in Las Vegas, city of sin, legal to pay for sex, that Las Vegas Golden Knight practices are happening. Really? Yeah, because Vegas has never had anything. Sure. Vegas has never, Vegas had those great UNLV teams of Tarkanian, and Vegas has never had, imagine what that's like for that city. I remember it happened down here with the Florida Panthers. You're filling an arena with, who don't know the color of a blue line. People who don't know the color of a blue line, my father's in the stands weeping, thinking the puck is made of metal. He doesn't know anything. And that's what Vegas people are doing. Like, wait a minute. The team just started and we get to win. Yeehaw. I'm leaving the brothel and going to the arena. So that's one story we should be covering more. I think yeehaw is like, you nailed it, man. That is the perfect. I don't know. I don't know. Yeehaw sounds more Midwest, but whatever. Midwest. And also, I believe the brothels are further outside of Las Vegas. Yeah. Friend told me. Yeah. Um, About so- a two hour drive, according to uh, Mike's friend. 
So this is a different series, different coach, different sound, and we're not going to give you any context for this. Let this be your only hockey knowledge so far that you're just sort of wandering over in the second round, and they've told you nothing else <laughs> about what's going on in hockey, and this is the first time you listen to anything. John, uh, it's a second straight round where, where Brad Marchand has licked an opponent, and uh, I'm just wondering if you think the league should step in and do something about that. Uh, all I'm going to say is like, there's absolutely no place in our game for that. Like, it's, I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't. And uh, how would you feel if I walked over to you right now and just gave you one big lick right from the chin all the way up? Yeah. <laughs> See, that's pretty sure how Callahan felt. There's just no place in the game for that. Coach, you seriously answered that question? <laughs> coach, reporter, you serious? You asked that question seriously and the coach responded seriously? Nobody's laughing? <laughs> Nobody's laughing that they're in the middle of the hockey playoffs where people are giving their lungs and spleens and teeth to the cause. Nobody has time to shave. They also, uh, <laughs> reporters also confronted the person who did the licking, Brad Marchand. Brett, the, the cameras Thank caught you, you um, with your tongue out again in a guy's face. Uh, what, where, where did that idea come from? To, well, he punched me four uh, times in the face, so, um, you know, he just kept getting close. Nothing big. Right, Nick Tarnas said he didn't know if there was a difference between uh, spinning in someone's face and, and licking him. What do you have to say about that? <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> what the hell's going on in hockey? Get me every expert that can talk about what's happening in this series. Everyone. Like, what is happening here that all these people are answering the question seriously? We got a serial liquor going on throughout the, the hockey playoffs. But who do you want on? Like Everyone. Us- <laughs> Which part of that didn't you understand? Okay. Everyone. Sound of the day is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Upgrade to shaving with a fresh blade whenever you want for a fraction of the price. Join dollarshaveclub.com today. Look, I don't dance now. I make money moves. But first, get that get the anti-Semitic urine col- collector. First, yeah, that's it's first. Dino Lorenzi. And it's alleged anti-Semitism that may have been cleared up over dinner <laughs> with the Bronx. <laughs> I didn't realize that that existed. I did not realize that there in all of the steroid defenses that I have heard over the years, all the denials as a veteran savvy journalist who has heard every lie concocted. I can't believe that one got past me. <laughs> the urine collectors and anti semite I had not heard that one. Everyone in the neighborhood knew about Bobby. Bobby, the basketball boy, they called him. Bobby wanted to go pro someday, so he was always out in the driveway shooting hoops. But one day, his mom came out and told him, Hey, your wife wants you to take out the trash? His mom was visiting, and Bobby was a grown man. He had kind of missed his window. Plus, no one had ever seen him actually make a basket. But on the other hand, Bobby had heard how Geico could save him money on car insurance, so he switched and saved. So, it was all good. Don Lebatard. Is it fair to say that Stugatz um, isn't trying very hard? Stugatz. Duh. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. Stugatz's weekend observations will be in 10 minutes. I doubt we'll be hearing an apology to Chris Paul. (laughs) Chris Paul has been a subject of the weekend observations for a long time, ripping him how he can never get out of the second round. Stu had the Rockets in trouble, what, five days ago? Yep, yep. They got themselves out of trouble. Good job by the Rockets, but they'll uh, be right back in trouble when they face the Golden State Warriors. I mean, that series will be over in five games. I'm serious. Golden State is so much better than the Houston Rockets, man. I know we're all looking forward to that series, but I can't imagine. I can't imagine any team, including the Cavaliers, uh, you know, taking the the Warriors to a sixth well, or seventh. Basketball game. doesn't provide much in the way of surprises. It'll be one two in the West, and it'll be LeBron and the big stunner, the two over the three, <laughs> the big stunner. Le- I mean, if I tell you before the season, it's going to be LeBron against the two. It's one two one two. Yeah. You'd, you'd think LeBron would be the one. Instead, he's the four. He's the four that's really a one. Put it on the poll, Guillermo. Is LeBron a four seed that's really the one seed? Because <laughs> that's, yeah, I mean, that's that's it. I, I was reading some stats this year because ESPN covers nothing like it covers LeBron. 
ESPN is an infomercial for LeBron James. It must be such a delight for LeBron James to just know that he could turn on ESPN at any time and we're talking about him. But now Ryan Windhorst is praising LeBron for walking better than everyone else. You ready for this? Yep. Because everyone's wondering, how is he playing so many minutes? How is he playing so many games? He never he never takes a game off this year. Uh quiet as it was kept, right? Because my guess is Adam Silver probably asked LeBron at some point, hey, I can't have you sitting out these games. Right. He played 82 games this year. Um, he hasn't done that ever in his entire career until this year. Well, and he played a ton of minutes, but here is Brian Windor saying the answer might be simple. For how is this happening? How is he not tired? James has perfected the art of resting while playing. Here's the data that illustrates it. No one would ever call James slow, but he is when he wants to be. During the regular season, his average speed during games was 3.85 miles per hour, according to second spectrum tracking data. Of all players who average at least 20 minutes a game, that ranked bottom 10 in speed. That's correct. James moves slower than just about any rotation player in the league. And since the playoffs started, he's gotten even slower than that. His average has slipped to 3.69 miles per hour. Here's why. He walks a lot. Nice. During the regular season, about 74.4% of James's time on the court was spent walking. 74.4% of James's time on the court is spent walking. That's top 10 in the league. Jordan always hustled. Almost no one walked up and down the floor more than James. And in the playoffs, He's walking even more. No. <laughs> yes. That's incredible. In the playoffs, it's 78.7% of the time Whoa. he's walking. That's wow. right. So don't say he doesn't pick up his game in the playoffs. <laughs> don't ever say that again, Bayless. His walking has gotten even better than it was. You thought, you thought the walking earlier this season was a mirage. He walks better than even you thought he did. And he walks better than Jordan. There I said it. He is bigger, slower, stronger. <laughs> <laughs> he is bigger, slower, stronger than Michael Jordan. It's been so much fun to watch. Man. Well, this is what I love about how we oh. praise genius. He walks slowly. He's the best I've ever seen. What? What? He's good. At, he won the game on a buzzer beater. What does that mean? He walks better than everybody else. Basketball's funny because LeBron's been this player always, but now he has moments like walk-offs. There's a lot of stock in walking off, like yep. a walk-off buzzer beater winner. It's not if you do that with one second. It has to be at the end of a game to win a game. Yep. And then all of a sudden, okay, Jordan debate back on. It's like someone sets off an alarm at the network. That buzzer keeps echoing through whenever he plays next time. <laughs> it's, and we're all, we're all alerted. We all run, we all run to the cameras to talk about LeBron. <laughs> Windhorse, what do you got that's fresh and new? He walks better than anyone. Skip, what is, what is it that you have that's fresh and new? All right. No, oh. all right. We'll circle back. All right. We'll come back around. What? Clutch Sheen is all you got. Still. He's a great walker. Washing my nose. Oh, yeah. I'm a shower curtain, and I do one thing. Keep water from leaking everywhere. So you see why I feel useless compared to Geico, who does so much more. Like, not only could Geico save you money, but they've been around for over 75 years. And they give you 24-7 access online, over the phone, or on the Geico app. And they've got a 97% customer satisfaction rating. They do all this while I have to listen to this chucklehead. Oh, good. He stopped. Washing my toes. Oh, great. An encore. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. So God's here for 1-800-Flowers. The countdown to Mother's Day is on, people. This is not a drill. You only have six days left to get Mom a gorgeous bouquet from 1-800-Flowers.com. So to help you get out of this jam, 1-800-Flowers is offering an amazing deal that Mom would approve of. Today only, when you order a dozen sorbet roses, 1-800-Flowers will give you an extra half dozen free plus a vase for just twenty nine ninety nine. That's right. Buy a dozen sorbet roses, get half a dozen plus a free vase for just twenty nine ninety nine. This limited time offer ends today, so order now. With an impressive mix of pastel shades like pink, orange, and lavender, these roses are guaranteed to make her smile. Roses are the perfect way to surprise all the moms in your life. 
wife, aunt, sister, grandma. These breathtaking roses from 1-800-Flowers are picked at their peak and shipped overnight to ensure freshness. Buy a dozen sorbet roses, get half a dozen free, plus a free vase for just $29.99. It's an amazing offer, but you have to hurry because it expires today. Whether you're surprising an aunt, sister, or mother, let them know how much you care with 1-800-Flowers.com. To order a dozen sorbet roses, get half a dozen plus a free vase for just $29.99. Simple. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com. You click the radio icon. You enter code DAN. That's 1-800-Flowers.com. Code DAN. Hurry. The offer ends today. Time for an oil change? Head to Jiffy Lube. We've got you covered. We've also got you covered when it comes to oil changes, thanks to Pennzoil Synthetic Motor Oil, getting you back on the road in a Jiffy. Jiffy Lube. Leave worry behind. Don Lebertard. Lucky for you, that's what I like. That's what I like. Sex by the fire at night. Silk sheets and diamonds all white. Lucky for you, that's what I like. That's what I like. Lucky for you, that's what I like. That's what I like. If you say you want a good time, well, here I am, baby. Here I am, baby. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Tell me what's on your mind. What's on your mind. If you want it, girl, come and get it. All this is here for you. Tell me, baby. Tell me. Tell me, baby. What you're trying to do. Gold jewelry shining so bright. Strawberry champagne on ice. Oh, go bleep yourself. Stugats. Honestly, it's offensive. I'm offended on behalf of, of, of everyone who's ever made music that that's the song of the year. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Stugats' weekend observations are in minutes. It's among the most popular things we do around here just a couple of minutes but does anyone have the world by the grapefruits right now more than donald glover uh in terms of just if i go all in on somebody who's got enormous talent just talent this person is talented uh where you can do saturday night live as childish gambino as donald glover and you can write and produce your own stuff and release a music video over the weekend that felt like what Kendrick Lamar aspires to. I don't, I can't think of someone right now in entertainment who's more talented than that dude. And you know, who's at the after party Saturday night live, Pablo Torre. What? That's right. Pablo's that's his boy. That's his guy. Donald Glover is Pablo's guy. I did not have that. Wow. In the uh, office pool. So Pablo Torre, let's call him and just ask him about the Saturday night, Saturday night Live after party. Pablo's wandering around there. That's very cool. Uh, how does he know? Like, did Donald Glover go to Harvard? Is that a? Uh, I mean, how is Pablo running in these circles? I'm a little jealous. I got to be honest. I couldn't have told that at all from your first question. Yeah. Where you're, you're suddenly your only question is not your only question is not about what the night was like, but how did Pablo uh, accomplish getting close to somebody? And I haven't been able to. You're jealous. He's hanging out with Donald Glover. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not sure you would know Donald Glover. If he just walked into no, that but, studio. No, but right that's now. perfect. No, I that's mean, perfect. Lethal weapon. <laughs> he clearly starred opposite Mel Gibson in the lethal weapon <laughs> franchise. Who wouldn't be jealous? <laughs> why, wouldn't they, why wouldn't you be? He's a little bit older than Pablo. I got to tell you, though, <laughs> that's the reason you were asking the question, yeah. because you thought it was weird that Pablo Torre would hang out with one of the stars of Lethal Weapon. Correct. Yes. <laughs> and, then, and then at this point, Danny Glover is a little bit older. He's a little bit older at this point. Pretty cool that he's doing music now. <laughs> it's amazing. It's impressive. Who would yeah. have had Danny Glover as one of, uh, you know, a great artist who did, who made a great video this weekend? <laughs> it was a huge upset when I saw that video, when I saw how good Dan, uh, Danny Glover looked shirtless. Donnie Glover. Time now for Stugatz's weekend observations. It is time for Stugatz to share his game notes. No one in the media will tell you what happened better than my boy Stu. Weekend observations is brought to you by Vivid Seats, the official ticket partner of ESPN. Download the free Vivid Seats app today to get your tickets. Dan, listen, he's great. But he's still not better than MJ. Yada year Molina. I'm so sorry. Sign that you are old. You send your wife a tweet saying, 
Can you believe this heat? You want to know why you didn't care about the Kentucky Derby? Because horse racing is dead. It died. The second Wes Welker won over $50,000, handed out $100 bills, while reportedly on Molly. Yadier Molina. I guess that's the way the ball bounces. Too soon? He didn't say a thing for 17 years. Now Tom Brady won't shut the hell up. Ben Roethlisberger, after hinting at retirement several times over the last three years, said he was surprised the Steelers drafted quarterback (laughs) Mason Rudolph. (laughs) Big Ben, the Stugats, is strong in you. Ben Roethlisberger is what happens when you've been emboldened by Tom Brady's recent comments, but you aren't aging anywhere nearly as well. Clayton Kershaw, not pitching well, and now injured, otherwise known as rounding into postseason form. Stagger Lee, December 31st, 1978, by the Grateful Dead at the final Winterland show. Greatest version of that song ever. How is it possible that the opponents get easier for the Cavaliers as they advance in the playoffs. <laughs> I mean, LeBron James is a series win away over Al Horford I know, right? from the NBA Finals. Whether or not he stays retired remains to be seen. Regardless, Jason Witten's hairline has already completed the greatest comeback in sports history. Alonzo Highsmith, gotta be honest, man. Josh Rosen is making you look silly. Todd Haley has total autonomy over the Browns' offense. Baker Mayfield, Todd Haley, sideline arguments, collision course. Joel Embiid blaming the officials for his poor performance. Joel, the Stugats, is strong in you. After getting drubbed in Game 3, Draymond Green stayed up late, watched film, and bombarded Kevin Durant. With 4 a.m. text, Draymond, the Lebitard, is strong in you. Rajon Rondo has had a better career than Chris Paul. Pacers forward, Thaddeus Young, said the sky's the limit. Thaddeus, if making the second round of the playoffs is the sky, then indeed, the sky's the limit. Good to see M. Night Shyamalan take a break from making bad movies to take in a Sixers game. I guess gagging all over yourself at home in Game 3 of the Eastern Conference Semifinals is part of the process. Joel Embiid, if you're going to talk, you might want to back it up with something better than 10 of 26. Any particular reason no one is ripping Brian Colangelo? Trading up for Fultz, letting Tatum go to the Celtics. He should be fired and replaced by Sam Henke. Wait. Brent Brown has trusted the process for five bleeping years and might get only one playoff run. Jay Wright, Philadelphia 76ers, collision course. The Bruins had to tell forward Brad Martian to stop licking his opponents. Brad Martian, hockey player. (laughs) That's not how you pronounce it. How do you pronounce it? You have him from another planet. Brad Martian, mental ward, collision course. How do you pronounce it? Uh, if the Celtics knew that t- uh, Terry Rozier was going to be this, do you think they still would have traded for Kyrie? And by the way, why didn't they know he was going to be this? Perhaps it's because he played three full seasons and has shot 38% from the field. But Daryl Morey told us, you know who a player is after three seasons. It was close, but Terry Rozier... Just snuck in that he's Allen Iverson. Celtics should trade Kyrie Irving and never, ever, ever, ever trade Jason Tatum. Ever. Never. Doc Emmerich, it's always a pleasure and it's always perfection. Poor Dwayne Casey. What the hell are you supposed to do? I'm still not sure if LeBron's game three, third quarter, was real. Paul Pierce said Brad Stevens was at the top of the NBA coaching totem pole. Paul, it's the bottom.
Totempoles.com. <laughs> Vegas has ruined expansion seasons for everyone else. Draymond Green has jumped the shark from cool and fun to just straight annoying. Here's the thing about these LeBron shots. They're terrible. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. I know. It's like, but he's bigger than everybody else, so he floats right out of bounds. Uh, but they're awful shots. I, I know, but he makes all of them. But he's fading away it's from half court. Really just throwing weird. it up in the air. It's really weird. It's like he's bleeping with them. <laughs> Utah Jazz. Joe Ingles can only carry you so far. You know what Donovan Mitchell hit over the weekend? The rookie wall. Man, hope this doesn't break Ben Simmons. Calling yourself the Hamptons Five. Very relatable. Skip Bayless, after LeBron James, has the same reach and respect as the crazy homeless guy who stands outside of music festivals telling everybody they're going to hell. LeBron James, do it in the finals. Jason Day, nice to have you back. Inching closer to the Western Conference Finals, otherwise known as the battle for Kevin Durant. Lamar Jackson still hasn't heard from Joe Flacco. Lamar, don't wait by the phone. Are we still waiting by phones? I guess you don't have to wait by phones anymore. <laughs> In hell, the only thing you are allowed to watch is the Yadier Molina video. Art Bryles is watching it right now. <laughs> Dan, those are the weekend <laughs> it is observations. Getting, it's more and more of a reach. What do you mean? You get to Art Bryles. It's getting worse and worse. <laughs> what do you, I don't know what I'm it's, saying. That's the thing that you can watch in hell. And Bryles is there, and he's watching the video of Yadier Molina. Get hit in the Molinas. Hi, everyone. Stu Gatz here. Support for the Dan Lebitard Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you are confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, and your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you the same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. Rocket Mortgage is simple allowing you to fully understand all the details and be confident you are getting the right mortgage for you. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz. That's rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz, S-T-U-G-O-T-Z. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states. NMLS, consumeraccess.org number 3030. Don Lebatard. I feel terrible. Here's the thing with you. You don't actually feel terrible. I didn't feel a no, thing. To no, be you, with no, you. No, you. I, mean, I don't really no. care. I know you announcing. I feel terrible is just your way to move on to the next terrible thing you're yeah. gonna do. Stugatz. They're just words, and words mean nothing. They to don't you. mean nothing. His yeah. words mean words, nothing. Words are just transitions to your next lie. That's so right. They're not words. They are bridges to lies. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. This Roethlisberger sound is funny. Yeah. Who were you calling a jerk during the break? Uh, 76ers fans. Who else? Well, I mean, I, you know, jerk is probably a little bit too strong. But just the fact that, you know, Sixer fans and, you know, I heard Stephen A. Smith, who predicted the Sixers would make it to the Eastern Conference Finals, maybe even the NBA Finals. And now because that doesn't appear likely to happen, he wants or is suggesting that Brent Brown should be fired. I mean, nothing about Ben Simmons. Nothing on how completely lazy Joel Embiid is on defense occasionally. Nothing about those two guys, okay? And a bunch of bad turnovers by J.J. Redick. It's all Brent Brown's fault. Are you kidding me? Brent Brown, who has trusted this process for five or six years now, and now everyone, after one playoff run, wants him fired. And I'm telling you, the city of Philadelphia should be ashamed of themselves. He deserves better than that. He is stuck by that team. He has done a great job. They're finally getting good. He deserves at least another year or two. At least. At the very least. That's what he deserves. Simmons melted down in a way that reminded you that he is 19. Or is he 20? Whatever he is, that's what people were saying would get Philadelphia knocked off. The idea... That you, in that league, in a man's league, you don't win without doing some losing. You don't win in the playoffs without doing some losing in the playoffs. He's 21. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. So I'm, that's a fine. It is not Dollar a fine. He was yeah. drafted in 19. Shouldn't he be a sophomore in college? I guess he should be a junior he in college. He should be a junior, yeah. A junior in college. Yep. That's a meltdown. He's also not a rookie. We can get into that later, but definitely I'd rather not, a not, but fair okay, enough. Okay. Well, I'm glad I got it in. All right. So, but the idea that he would, I mean, the the difference in that series right now 
Yeah. Uh, between it being over and you thinking the Sixers are still going to win it, is Ben Simmons at the end of a playoff game just short circuiting? Or I can make the argument, yes, or I can make the argument that Brian Colangelo is the difference in that series because he decided to take Markel Fultz and not Jason he's Tatum. He's the one who's 19. If he had Jason Tatum, forget the series be over. He, he's the one who's 19. Yes. Guillermo, put this on the poll. Is it more embarrassing to score one point in a playoff game than to score zero? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Ben Simmons scored one point in a playoff game. Yep. And I thought it was more embarrassing than Chris Bosh, who scored zero in a game seven of the finals. <laughs> Everybody was taking victory laps about the process uh, last series. But when you really look and analyze of what the process was, there was o- Okafer. Oh, no. There was Nerlens no, Noel. No, no, but the Michael pro- Carter Williams. No, the pro- there was trading up for, uh, Markel Fultz and letting Bossing get, uh, Jason Tatum, who, by yes. the way, they have your first round pick this year. Your hits on that draft was Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid, and they've played what? A combined one and a half seasons, even though they were eligible for four? Right, but who hit on those guys? It was Sam Hankey. All it right, was but, not Brian but, Colangelo. But hold on one a time second. Colangelo started poking his beak around there, the whole thing got messed up. Hold on a second. First of all, it's Brent Brown. That's Whatever. a fine. Okay. Well, I, what do you mean? I get fined for that? It's Brent Brown. Secondly. All right. I'll pay you, but watch your tone. What the process actually was yeah. is not not having success and then having success. The process is accruing so many talented picks at the top of the draft that even you being unscientific about drafting players, you being no good at drafting players, if you hit on one or two, you have gamed the system by tanking so that you can get one or two stars and not have to do it in free agency. While they've been lousy at how they've used their top picks, getting one or two stars from all those top picks is the process. Also, it's Brett Brown. Fine. Big one. Is it? It's Brett Brown. I mean, that's triple digits. I mean, seriously. Is it Brett Brown or Correcting is it Brett Brown? Correcting me with something that's worse than what I said in the first but place. But you I didn't mean, even know that my correction was wrong. That's a fine. What? Overfining me is a fine now. You watch your tone. I've made it so. Overfining me is now a fine. What do you mean you made it so? I just made it so right now. Well, I'm going to make this so. When you correct someone with an incorrect it should correction, be, it should be, it's $500. It should be. <laughs> that seems That seems steep. Only for you, though. No one else on the show. Guillermo, put it on the poll. Is it Brett or Brent? Is it Brett, Brent, who, or who cares? Put who cares as an option. That is Straight Talk. It is brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Nationwide coverage on America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE network. Stephen A. Smith is doing that move, though, where he thought something was going to happen. It doesn't happen, so fire everybody. <laughs> I mean, it's incredible. It is. It is. Listen, something, it's a plague on the sports industry, man. I know that move, and I'm proud of Stephen A. because Lord knows I have done that move. I perfected that move, but he is doing that move. And Stephen A., there's a little bit of Stu Gods in everyone, man. That move is something you will see across sports. Person predicts X. That does not happen. Rip the team that produced the incorrect prediction. And fire Brent Brown. What the hell's that guy's name? Is it Brett or is it Brent? Why are we defending the job of Brett Brent Brown? It's going to be Jay Wright. Don Libertard. Where's our trip to Mars, Musk? Oh, you hear what he said about Mars? The first few people who go to Mars on his mission, SpaceX, whatever it is, they're probably going to die. Stugats. So I want to have this writer on because I think uh, I want to expose Elon Musk because I'm not credible enough to do it. But this guy seems to be my guy. He seems to have facts. You want him to give you the facts that you yes. can then be armed with to say, look, when we go to Mars, Elon Musk is going to kill us first. Yeah. This is the Don Lebatar show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Dan Lebatar show appear via the Shell Pennzoil performance line. Here's your Sports Center update. El Clasico, Real Madrid, and Barcelona finished up with a 2 2 draw as Cristiano Ronaldo exited early with an ankle sprain. CC Sabathia says he'll like re, uh, retire if the Yankees win the World Series this season. And finally, while it hasn't been officially confirmed, it appears the third film in the John Wick franchise will be called John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum. In Latin, the term parabellum means prepare for war. I am in, man. <laughs> John Wick is, I, he might be the baddest movie character in terms of just the scariest movie character of all time. You agree? 
Him or Bodie Zaffa. For you pros out there, this week is OSHA's safety stand down and we've teamed up with Werner to take a time, take a time out to learn about ladder and fall protection safety. Remember, falls are preventable. Go to WernerStandDown.com to learn more. That's WernerStandDown.com. I wish I took that course. Remember I fell off a ladder, went to the emergency room, I was trying to get a lizard off my uh, ceiling. I stood on the top step of that ladder. I'm telling people this is why this is important, okay? It says don't stand on the top step of the ladder. I did. I fell nearly to my death, had to go to the emergency room, drove myself, and came in the next day, and you guys mocked me for it. And so what I am encouraging people to do, because it's important, is go to warnerstanddown.com. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. How high are your ceilings? Yeah. Uh, those are high ceilings. That was, that was two houses ago. Can you nearly fall to your death and drive yourself to the emergency room? I did. I did it. Put it on the pole. Can you nearly fall to your death and then drive yourself to the... I mean, he's turning it into both a live read and an act of heroism yeah. that he fell while trying to get a, ligger, a lizard off his uh, roof. I mean, my, my daughters would not go to sleep with my ceiling. That's a fine. My daughters would not go to sleep because they saw this lizard on the ceiling and they said, Daddy, you got to get down. We can't go to sleep. They're Why crying. did you turn that into a live spot for, for what? For Well, I mean, it's Warner Stand Down and they're teaching you how to, you know, you can get injured on a ladder and I've been injured on a ladder. So, oh, I think so it's you were important. Giving, oh, you were giving that read a personal touch? Yes, I was. Right. That, that people are probably sitting around going, really? You want to teach me how to, you know, climb and climb up a ladder and climb down a ladder? And I'm telling you, yeah, because I thought the same thing. And then I got injured on a ladder. That's it. A ladder where the top set uh, step clearly says, do not ever step on this. Every ladder in the history of ladders says that on the top step. Yep. WarnerStandDown.com. I mean, I wish this was around when I was uh, climbing ladders. So Ben Roethlisberger has this sound from 93.7, the fan. Let's listen to the sound of Ben Roethlisberger being shocked and appalled <laughs> that the Steelers drafted a quarterback. <laughs> I told them when the season was over, I felt really good and had plan was planning on coming back for you know three to five years. Exactly what I just told you guys. So I was surprised when they took a quarterback because I I thought that maybe in the third round, you know, you can get some really good football players that can help this team now. And nothing against Mason, I think he's a great football player. I don't know him personally, but I'm sure he's a great kid. I just don't know how you know backing up or being the, the third. Uh, who knows where he's going to fall in the depth chart? But helps us win now. But you know that's not my decision to make you know that's on the coaches and the the, the gm and all and those kind of things so <laughs> if they feel like he can help our team so be it but i was a little surprised uh that was not the end of ben roethlisberger's <laughs> opinions on the cook and pony show 93.7 the fan will you feel any extra or added responsibility to take him under your wing do you think you'll have to do that i, I don't think i'll need to now. he said that he doesn't need me so he asked me a question. I might have to just point to the playbook, you know. <laughs> <laughs> have you talked to him no, yet, Ben? Uh, I have not talked to him yet. Uh, I don't think they're in town yet. Um, I think that the biggest thing is I need to get myself prepared to play. Right? I mean, that's first priority. I've in the past I've helped Ranger with stuff. I helped Josh. They have questions, but but first priority is getting myself ready to play because I, as far as I know, I'm still the starter. So I need to get myself ready to go, ready to play to win a championship. You listen back to that, like he was expecting from uh, from Cook and Pony, he was expecting uh, big laughs after just point to the playbook because he was laughing at his own joke and he thought those guys. I don't were think laugh I've ever heard Ben, ben Roethlisberger <laughs> laugh before. I, I I think that's the first time I've ever heard the Ben Roethlisberger laugh, and of course it would be at his own joke. <laughs> <laughs> Cook and Pony weren't laughing. No, they were not. They were just listening, <laughs> gathering up the sound so they could feed it to us at ESPN and we can make content out of it. <laughs> Back in 2005, uh, Ben Roethlisberger on Tommy Maddox said, quote, I owe so much of my success to his help. Oh, I don't blame Ben Roethlisberger for not wanting to train his replacement. I just find it funny that he lacks so much self-awareness that he would talk about retirement publicly for three years and then get surprised when the Steelers finally say, hey, you're getting kind of old and you've been talking about retiring. <laughs> and that whole thing about every time you scramble out of the pocket, it looks like a skyscraper is trying to run. It's only your back legs that are moving. And you say that you want to play three to five years like Tom Brady, but he doesn't think that the only thing he needs to change about his diet is to simply add a muscle milk to the beer. <laughs>
Like that, that, how do you imagine Ben Roethlisberger diets in the off season as he heads toward retirement? <laughs> diets. <laughs> like I, I'm gonna have a five, five, I'm only gonna have beers in the garage five days a week. <laughs> he said, "I need to help get myself ready for the for the regular That's season." Right. What does that mean? I need extra Hopping mentoring. On the elliptical I'm, for gonna, ten minutes? I'm gonna mentor myself <laughs> for ten minutes on the elliptical I'm while adding sipping a, chicken, a Slurpee. I'm adding a chicken Caesar that has rum in it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to put it on the poll. Does Ben Roethlisberger run on the treadmill with one of those wet willy drinks or fat Tuesday drinks? You have rum, just to be clear, in the Slurpee, not the Caesar. <laughs> I have rum everywhere. <laughs> I'm just asking you, how does Ben Roethlisberger how, how <laughs> diet is what I'm asking. I'm asking you a question. Uh, not well. He doesn't. <laughs> Ben Roethlisberger thinks he's going to age uh, like Tom Brady without doing any of the meticulous things Tom Brady is doing to help him age. No, I will not biggie size at this time. <laughs> I love, I love though that it's just so great, right? Because he, of course, is great. But the idea that he would look up and be like, why the Steelers draft a young quarterback? When I've been the last two off seasons, I've been bothering everyone in our city talking about, I don't know how much longer I want to do this. I don't blame him for one second for not wanting to train his replacement in a competitive field. That part, I don't blame him on. I mean, he shouldn't be willing to help the guy out. I mean, he had help along the way. He's quoted as saying I, so. I No, no. But when it's this specific, it's rarely this specific. Right. Where somebody that you're helping can this specifically take your job? We'll stop talking about retirement. And they don't take Mason Rudolph. But you keep talking about it, so they took Mason Rudolph. And then suddenly you went from, I'm going to play maybe another year to two years to three to five years. Like, stop talking about it. And they don't take Mason Rudolph. But now that they have Mason Rudolph, Dan, you got to help out Mason Rudolph. You no, can't you do don't. that. No, you don't have to help him out. Oh, you should. I mean, come on. Ben can start there for as long as Ben wants to start there. I he mean, can. Not necessarily. He was shading Rudolph for saying, well, I'll get myself ready then. But he was saying that in response to Ben Roethlisberger not initially caring for the draft pick whatsoever. And he's just holding that against Mason Rudolph. I just find this juxtaposition funny because while I blame no quarterback, Favre didn't want to train Aaron Rodgers. I don't blame, and nobody in our audience listening would this overtly. The man, this isn't altruism. This isn't a dot org. It's not Pittsburgh Steelers dot org. Somebody's coming for his job. If Mason Rudolph is too good and cheaper, I don't blame Ben Roethlisberger for being that kind of selfish. What he can't be is selfish within that huddle when they're playing. He damn well can be selfish before they ever get to that huddle. But I always imagine, you know, Chris Chandler going to the sideline with a young Michael Vick wearing a ball cap and going through, all right, here's what you have yeah, to do. Ben, and then no. here you take the yes, reins. But ben, yeah. No, but Ben Roethlisberger, see that in that instance, Chris Chandler's a career journeyman. He's not a champion. He's not the guy who thinks he's the reason for their winning. He got to one Super Bowl and then he helps the obvious number one pick who's a young player and separates him by 15 years. I guess Tommy Maddox at the time was a journeyman quarterback. So yeah. that's the guy. It's so much easier for journeyman to do was, it. You don't think Peyton was helping out Andrew Luck? I don't. No. No? That's why they got rid of him. They got rid of there him There wasn't for space Andrew for them. Luck. And by the way, Peyton, notoriously, if you talk to people in the know, we wasn't. That, why do you think they always had terrible backups in, in, in I Indianapolis? I just love that Stugatz has uh, Peyton Manning mentoring uh, Andrew Luck while he's still at Stanford. Like Pey I love Peyton Manning like taking games off to go mentor Andrew Luck during his last season. It's like that's the thing you're supposed to do in sports. Like I'm with my I always imagine it was like pass it down, like pass it down from one quarterback to the next. I just I don't know. I thought that's the way it was. Uh, Roethlisberger continues to be rough, especially on the road. He has some really bad starts, and the way his whole approach to this season, as opposed to the last two, kind of screams insecurity to me. Oh, but when you, man, oh man. I think you guys are underestimating. This right now is Ben Roethlisberger, even though his body hurts and he, you know, has articulated for a while that pain is making him think about quitting. The aging process for Ben Roethlisberger is such and his greatness is such that look at Tom Brady sitting here out here publicly saying he, he fifth, he's taking the fifth on whether he feels appreciated or not. Tom Brady. 
where the organization has come out and said, put its name on, a craft put his name on publicly, Tom can retire however he wants. And he still feels unappreciated. How do you feel, Ben? I, I get this stuff, man. I understand why you guys see insecurity there, but I also get why it is that you get greedy about having your stuff and you don't want to share it. And that flies in the face of the team concept. But Antonio Brown and Ben Roethlisberger are always fighting because Antonio Brown wants the ball. And that always is something that goes against the selflessness of the team concept where Roethlisberger will go days without speaking to Antonio Brown because Antonio Brown has gotten so annoyed during a game that he's not the one getting the catches. A number five with a Diet Coke. Uncle Fatty, Snoo Waterworld isn't going to pay for itself. Oh, he's throwing the diet in there now. <laughs> All right, you ready to go. <laughs> I don't know how else to say this, so I'll just say it. What is it, Linda? I think we should see other people. Are you breaking up with me on a roller coaster? Well, we do have a lot of fun. Maybe we should stay together. An emotional roller coaster? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to Geico. I just need a little me time. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Don Lebatard. Mike, for some reason, I saw you in the room there working on what I thought was your Andrew Luck. I wasn't sure. I walk into the room, and of course, what they're talking about is who in sports would you call to rescue your life if you were in a threatening situation and feel like you were going to actually be rescued? And so he's working on his Andrew Luck. So let's go ahead and play it out. Stugatz. Well, you know, not something I, I want to do, but I, absolutely, it'll save your life. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll rappel down the, this cave and I'll, I'll, I'll neutralize the threat and I'll, I'll, I'll secure the perimeter and I'll, you know, get you back to your beautiful wife. And, you know, happy wife, happy life, you know. Jack Doyle. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Now this person is out there somewhere in the sports radio wilderness keeping his or her tabulations and this person has written in i guess it's three weeks maybe three and a half weeks considering baseball off days hey guys the yankees are 18 and three since you went on sports center to laugh at john carlos stanton striking out <laughs> you're welcome yeah <laughs> This guy's keeping Motivated. stats. What's he doing? Putting like marks on a prison wall? Like 18 and three since your show went on air to laugh at John Carlos Stanton striking out. Like what kind of sports existence are you living when <laughs> your reaction to seeing laughter on television is to go to your wall and start <laughs> making sure to tabulate the results uh, of your team? It's so funny. It's awesome, though. I mean, that's what sports is I all mean, about. I mean, it pays. Yeah. It pays us a great deal. Yep, thank you, as Mike said. But listen, here's the thing. They're doing it, and Stanton's not even hitting yet. <laughs> they're gr- when they're great. Hitting. Our sports center hit really got to Dee Dee Gregarious. <laughs> yes. They're a great Gregorious. baseball team. Yes, Whatever. Fine. Fine. <laughs> the fine. But there are people all over sports doing that. Like, the Celtics fans now are looking for all the people. You guys said we couldn't win. Oh, yeah. I thought you were going to lose. Right. I mean, Look at your team. I thought, no, no chance. And, and, the top two players. and furthermore, you're ruining everything. Yes, you're, you are. You're ruining everything. It's not what the consumer wants. Your team losing later. Yeah. Be a little bit more likable about this. You guys being right. The thing. Celtics should mentor the Sixers the way Ben Roethlisberger is not mentoring. <laughs> you would say the, the, I would guess the national audience definitely wants Cavs Sixers as opposed to Cavs Celtics, right at this point? That goes without saying, doesn't it? You want well, stars. You want stars. That, that league is built on stars. That league, when was, when was the NBA on tape delay? 1981? When stars arrived. When stars arrived is when that league changed it. And that is why that league's attitude toward stars is so much different than football. Football wants everyone to have the same personality, antiseptic, hidden behind a helmet, disposable. Right. Basketball rewards its stars with power and fame and money, and we reward that with television ratings. I mean, Terry Rozier, though, man. Scary Terry. Is Terry, Rozier, is Terry Rozier not proof of what I was telling you about Isaiah Thomas? 
in that offense? Is Terry Rozier what, get not the minutes? You'll get the numbers. Get the usage rate in that offense, and they'll and they'll figure out a way. Get the get the ball in the usage rate, and and if they could do it with Isaiah Thomas, who was a nomad, they could do it with a lot of guys. Yeah, I was going to say I thought Isaiah Thomas was proof positive enough, but okay, look but at Terry Rozier. Didn't believe me on Isaiah Thomas. They made Isaiah Thomas a star, and I'm telling you, I could have put 50 guys in the league in the position that Terry Rozier is in and get in the, and I'd get the same stuff that Terry Rozier is giving you. They're doing it with Rozier now, too. Rosillo is saying there isn't a single player on the Miami Heat you would take above uh, Terry Rozier. This guy's played for three seasons, shooting 38% from the that's field. Funny. Yeah, well, that's what happens, though. You play in the big game, so we got to figure out a way to talk about it. And so what do you see on Sports Center today? It's all coronating, uh, you know, Brad Stevens, greatest greatest mind in the sport, simply because all of us thought the Sixers were going to win. How about he do something first? Before we make him the greatest coach in the NBA, how about Brad Stevens do something? Get to an NBA well, final but, but before minute, we anoint but, you but, as the but, best coach but, in the he's league. He's consistently overachieved, Stugat. You can't ask for more than that from a coach. He's consistently overachieved. Beyond- I can ask more if I want. You ask what you want to ask out of your co- coach, and I'll ask what I want to ask out of my coach. And my coach, I want him to win championships. This guy hasn't even gotten to the NBA Finals. Please. Overachieved. He's overrated. That's what he is. You're a one-trick pony, man. You have to beat everyone to the rush criticizing the guy that everyone is. Stugatz here for 1-800-Flowers. The countdown to Mother's Day is on, people. This is not a drill. You only have six days left to get Mom a gorgeous bouquet from 1-800-Flowers.com. So to help you get out of this jam, 1-800-Flowers is offering an amazing deal that Mom would approve of. Today only, when you order a dozen sorbet roses, 1-800-Flowers will give you an extra half dozen free plus a vase for just twenty nine ninety nine. That's right. Buy a dozen sorbet roses, get half a dozen plus a free vase for just twenty nine ninety nine. This limited time offer ends today, so order now. With an impressive mix of pastel shades like pink, orange, and lavender, these roses are guaranteed to make her smile. Roses are the perfect way to surprise all the moms in your life. Wife, aunt, sister, grandma. These breathtaking roses from 1-800-Flowers are picked at their peak and shipped overnight to ensure freshness. Buy a dozen sorbet roses, get half a dozen free, plus a free vase for just twenty nine ninety nine. It's an amazing offer, but you have to hurry because it expires today. Whether you're surprising an aunt, sister, or mother, let them know how much you care with 1-800-Flowers.com. To order a dozen sorbet roses, get half a dozen plus a free vase for just twenty nine ninety nine. Simple. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com. You click the radio icon. You enter code DAN. That's 1-800-Flowers.com. Code DAN. Hurry. The offer ends today. Don Lebertard. I don't like when, like, big-time celebrities, they get so big and then they're going to write a children's book. It's an easy cash grab. And quite frankly, I don't need Jack White's advice on how to raise my children. It's annoying. Sorry. Hey, Jack White, please. Let me tell you, the last place I'm going for children advice, for child advice, for parenting advice, is to Jack White and his stupid book. Jack White. Stugatz. And honestly, who is Jack White? Pretentious Jack White. Hey, I'm going to fire up a children's book. Tell you how to parent your kids. Leave me alone. Just write new songs. Stop writing books. Write new songs. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. We are going to do funniest thing from the sports weekend here in just a couple of seconds. But... These Raptors, how demoralizing do you think it is to keep trying to get missing pieces, last pieces, Serge Ibaka, P.J. Tucker, Van Fleek, the bench. Uh, Van ch- Vliet. The, the, the change your entire offense, Van Fleet. <laughs> uh, what I call him, Van Fleek? Yeah, yeah. Fleek. It's Vliet, I think. Whatever. They keep changing <laughs> their offense. They've got the coach of the year who now three games in is going to be fired. Because of the end of these games. Because <laughs> one of the greatest players ever. Dwayne Case is going to get fired because this guy's hitting the most ridiculous the shots most I've ever ridiculous. seen. How embarrassing is it, though? <laughs> you change everything about yourselves to beat this one person, and he's howling with laughter at you, shooting basketballs out his butt into the basket. You know what? Because I think the Raptors, Mike, I think they're actually better. 
Like the game one, that's a game they should have won. They didn't. Game two was a complete disaster. Game three, they fought really hard without DeMar DeRozan. Like they had a chance to win that game. DeRozan sitting in the fourth quarter. But what are you going to do when LeBron's putting those kind of shots up? I think the worst Raptors team of the last three years is one that actually took Cleveland to six. They've supposed to be improving every year since then. And it's funny. Glue guy P.J. Tucker can't stop LeBron. Then he goes to Houston, supposed to be the glue guy. And then amazing defense on Kevin Durant just shoots right over him because he's a giant. Greatness wins. Well, Always. where giant greatness does, yes. Um, who are the guys, what are the names of the guys, I can't pronounce the guys who are trying to guard uh, guard LeBron, the LeBron stopper, stop, stoppers for the Raptors. Where are they from? What are their nationalities? All right, hold Stu on. Like, uh, Stu likes to call uh, Vujicic. The Russian. The Russian, even though he's from Sweden. Mm-hmm. Orlando's. Switzerland. Switzerland. Yeah, Switzerland. Switzerland. Yeah, Pekovic, also a Russian. What are the nationalities of the guy? Toronto is scouring the globe, trying to find someone who could guard LeBron. <laughs> Going to every crevice, crevice of the universe, and then at the end of the game, when two guys should be guarding him, nobody is. A Nobi or someone like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's actually British. Yeah. Um, the other thing, though, Mike, is the shot that LeBron got at the end of regulation game one should have should have beat him there too he got a shot there fading to his left as well that's right yeah with 0.6 left on the clock <laughs> I forgot but he got about that. with 0.6 left on the clock he got a wide open look that was easier to make than this shot well that's the criticism that Dwayne Casey is getting right now how is LeBron oh, open you gotta with 0.6? trap him well, you've got to trap and him it's fair criticism I don't know if it's Casey's fault he was kind of being sarcastic he said maybe I need to emphasize even more to my guys in the timeout I don't want LeBron to get the ball I mean, you you just gotta <laughs> trap him I don't <laughs> like it can't be LeBron full court somehow wide open. They had him. I mean, they had him. Legler did a great job of breaking it down. They had him double teamed. He would have had to pass based on the time left and where he was in the court, had to pass it to Kevin Love. And then from there, who knows? Probably goes right. Like Kevin Love's not doing that. <laughs> well, whatever, whatever. It's got to go somewhere else. You have to, uh, you have to make someone else. For the Cleveland Cavaliers on a full court shot. But I'm telling you, they were inbounding half court. Point six seconds left in game one at the end of regulation. And he got the same look. Better. It's crazy. Better. <laughs> and so the Raptors try and change everything. Their whole blueprint is constructed to knock him off. And he, I, I mean, Rachel Nichols described it on SportsCenter. He's laughing at them. He is. I mean, some of these shots, Dan, it is. Like game three, third quarter. Did you watch that thing? Yeah, he's just I've never seen him hit no, shots no, like that. No, he's done it. But not, entire, Dan, no, not but, this consistently. No, he's done that before when he wants to. And all it shows you is that if he wants to be at 42, he'll be LaMarcus Aldridge. Like if he feels like it. <laughs> if at 42, he doesn't hey, feel, better LaMarcus he Aldridge, doesn't feel yeah. like ever going toward the rim again. He will just be LaMarcus Aldridge <laughs> shooting, <laughs> shooting fadeaway junk over everybody. But to Sue's point, LeBron's always cared about efficiency. He's a supercomputer. Those are bad shots. They are know, bad for him. shots. But they, he's they, never taken them with this sort know, of regularity. No, that's true. But it's so much yeah. fun. It looks like so much fun for everybody involved except the Raptors. Speaking of laughing. It looks like he should be saying, wee, yes, when he throws does, him up in the air. He's yeah. having a great deal of fun. <laughs> what are we putting on the pole at Levitar's show? Does it look like LeBron screaming, wee, <laughs> on the fadeaways? <laughs> on all of the fadeaways. Hey, people. Tell us what in the sport made you laugh hardest this weekend. It is a segment we call, what made you laugh this weekend. Ha, ha, ha. Funniest thing from the sports weekend is brought to you by the Capital One Venture Card. Earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day. What's in your wallet? Speaking of funny, how about the fact that LeBron wouldn't do that to J.J. Barea? <laughs> and now he's doing it for an imported Brit. Everybody all over the world, Toronto is looking for someone who can guard LeBron. <laughs> all he had to do was post up All JJ. he had to do yeah. with J.J. Barea is just turn around and shoot. <laughs> Make him eat your belly button. Uh, Chris, what do you got for us on Funniest Thing from the Sports Weekend? The 76ers dropping confetti after Marco Bellinelli's <laughs> game-tying shot. Not game-winning. That's, that's great. Wow. That's <laughs> just great. Good Lord. Funny, man. <laughs> Guillermo, nobody's topping that. Guillermo, what do you got? Over the weekend, Astros reliever Colin McHugh became the first person to use the Diamondbacks' bullpen cart. Wow. It's the oh, first wow. time someone's been driven to the mound on a motorized vehicle since the Brewers in 1995 would take pitchers to the mound using a motorcycle with a sidecar. I miss the mo I miss I miss the bullpen car. Same here. 
That's old school. Roy, what do you got? A Nationals groundskeeper got uh, caught under the tarp during a rain delay. Oh, that's scary. <laughs> Always funny and scary. It can be funny and scary. <laughs> if if he had gotten hurt in any way, though, Sports Center would have had a lot of outside the line stories about uh, you know be careful with the tarps. The tarps. Uh, nobody's been policing the tarps. Who's in charge of the tarps? <laughs> but thankfully, that's not what happened. So we could just laugh at it. Mike, what do you got? I'm going to keep it with the Raptors. After going down 0-2, dropping the first two games at home, DeMar DeRozan said, we thrive when we face adversity. <laughs> <laughs> Guillermo, put it on the poll, please. Does DeRozan know what the word adversity means? I'm serious. Or thrive. Stugatz, what do you have? Matt Harvey. And the Mets. Could have traded them three years ago for literally any single guy they wanted in anyone's minor league system, and now they'll get nothing for Matt Harvey. He's done. Fake case. I'm going to go with just Drake's face (laughs) after LeBron hit the shot. (laughs) I saw it just on Twitter right now. He's beefing with LeBron's son. Who, oh, who's stop, talking trash, saying your season? Yeah, yeah, he's saying your season ends tonight. That's br- what Bronny is saying to Drake. <laughs> Drake's already said, "No, my season starts in June. That's when his album drops." <laughs> so he's already left the Raptors. That's not his team anymore. <laughs> he's cleaned out his office, the office he has at the uh, center. Does, doesn't he usually move on to the Cavs after the Raptors are done? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that his thing? He does. I'll be courtside. That's what he meant by his season starts in June. (laughs) Let's see who's in the finals. Did you guys see Anthony Davis's response when one of the reporters asked him about Draymond's uh, rebounding? Anthony Davis could not have been more dismissive of the question. All he said is, he's the biggest big they've got out there. Somebody's got to grab the ball when we miss. (laughs) Does Drake have to go to compliance meetings? Oh, man. You think that, does Drake have to do the sexual harassment course? He doesn't get trained on all these things. That's a great question. Does, does he go to the holiday party? Does Drake have, to, these are great questions. Is he a company employee who has to go to the seminars about how you treat people in the workplace? PTO, Reason World Tour. <laughs> Wait a minute. LeBron's kid? Is taunting Drake on Twitter. Yeah, I saw a blurb on Twitter. Bronny James, your season ends tonight. <laughs> so LeBron does it. This is how LeBron's entire family is is laughing in a country of basketball. Like the entire family. Is his wife going to hammer somebody next? I think they're just laughing at Drake. Yippee Kaye, mother. Oh, yeah, he's really going after him, Mike. <laughs> LeBron's kid is yeah. going after Drake? <laughs> Just mocking How him. How old is he? Isn't he like sixth grade? <laughs> Seventh grade? I mean, wouldn't you do that if that was your dad? <laughs> How old is Bron? Oh, he's gotten scholarships already. Bron- LeBron's kid has gotten scholarships already. We've been telling you to get flowers for Mother- Mother's Day. It's a necessity. But what goes best with flowers? Greeting cards. That's where Hallmark excels. This is the right time as well for this and your mother's Hallmark. Bronny is 13, though. Oh, my God. So what grade does that put him in? Eighth or eighth, freshman? Eighth. Yeah, there's old, yeah, there's an older one, right? There's Bryce, right? Yeah. What's he doing, the Drake? Anything? We don't know yet? Hi, everyone. Stu Gatz here. Support for the Dan Lebitar Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you are confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, and your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you the same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. Rocket Mortgage is simple, allowing you to fully understand all the details and be confident you are getting the right mortgage for you. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz. That's rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz, S-T-U-G-O-T-Z, equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org number 3030. Don Lebatard. LaMarcus Aldridge. Awful. Stugatz. I mean. No, he's an embarrassment, man. He's bad. He's not a good player. I don't know what happened to him because when he was in Portland, he was fantastic. He is not good, Dan. He cost him the game last night. 
They, Although they won the game. They, but yeah. had they lost, I'm telling you, it would have been on LaMarcus Aldridge. Really? And the only reason it's not is because they won the game. And I'm still going to crush him, even though they won. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Did you see that Scott Frost, the UCF coach, who helped coach UCF to an undefeated season, did you see what he said about UCF trying to declare itself national champions? No. He doesn't like it. Oh. He just wishes they would call themselves undefeated and peach bowl champions. And they wish he would have stayed there to be their head coach. He didn't. He left in Nebraska. So shut up. Wow. Hey, you're not the coach there anymore. It's not your problem. UCF could do whatever they want. Okay, but they asked. You want to have a say at the school, then, you know, you should have stayed at the school. You didn't. You went to Nebraska. Good luck with that. With bonuses. $200,000. $200,000. Good luck with what? The giant program that's much better and an obvious promotion than the job he had? Yep, that hasn't been good in, I don't know. I mean, it hasn't been, but that's half. that's exactly the place you want to go. You know what? You, you know, want to go to the place that hasn't been good in a decade and a half that you could rebuild because that's what Nick Saban did. He just left the national champion. That's I mean, what Nick Saban did. Nick well, Saban stepped what? down. I mean, you know who else wasn't very good? UCF, two years ago, winless. 0 and 12 when Scott Frost took them over. Yeah. Um, and, you know, strange to leave right after you win a national championship. I'll, I'll I mean, tell you what's strange. First of all, you what happened? arriving here to gratuitously rip Scott Frost yeah. for, and, and just let me explain to you, you who has made a career out yeah. of words mispronounced, misspelled, misspoken. You are telling a guy to shut up because he's been asked a question. You don't want to hear his opinion, so you're telling him, to shut up. He's been asked his opinion on his former school and what he says. And I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you right up until you turn around. What I don't understand is why you have to immediately go to shredding, ripping, ripping like your stew got scissor hands. Right. Like you can't, you can't just, you can't go from this is something that Scott Frost said to merely dissecting the comments in a funny way. You have to go to criticizing Scott Frost's entire character right. for leaving a program and then denying him the freedom of an opinion. We're in the opinion business, man, not in the dissecting business, all right? That's not what we do. We're but he opinion. gave you his opinion. Uh, but I, and I disagree with it, and I think he sounds stupid, and he's covering his tracks because he knows he left a good job, a team, a, a college, a program that won a national championship for a team that hasn't been relevant in a decade and a half. I mean, Frost. Do me a favor. If you want to comment on UCF, then stay at UCF, okay? okay? I don't there need to hear about it once you've left UCF and you're now you're in Nebraska. And again, as I mentioned earlier, good luck with that. I mean, geez. <laughs> He's that absolutely right. dreadful. Thank you. His name should be Scott Fraud. This guy left his team early. He went to Nebraska. He didn't think this team was going to go undefeated. Didn't think they were going to win a national championship. Now he looks like a bozo. Everybody's laughing at him for this decision because he left the best team in the country to go to Nebraska because he thinks that that's going to be a high profile. Not going to happen. He left the national championship. Now he's saying that they're not national champions. So people don't tell him he's a dummy like he is. Shut up. Yep. Hey, here's the thing. Had he stayed at UCF, I'm certain he would have fully embraced this whole national championship thing, but he didn't. He left. He went to Nebraska. Therefore, they haven't won a national championship. Shut up, Scott Fraud. I do love the fact that he wants them to, instead of declaring themselves national champions of a bogus system, Peach Bowl champs is what he wants (laughs) them to refer to themselves as. Yes, undefeated and the Peach Bowl champion. (laughs) Shut up. I understand why Scott Frost would protect the system, though, that gets him $200,000 in bonuses and allows him to leave for a promotion without penalty <laughs> while telling his former school what it can't call itself. It's because he's Scott Fraud. I mean, honestly, it, it, Guillermo, put it on the poll. Is Peach Bowl champions a compliment? <laughs> I'm dead serious. The Chick fil A Peach Bowl. It, I'm dead serious about this. <laughs> Scott Frost does not want them having fun or a parade or a celebration for their undefeated season. He is only, he's putting the ceiling at Peach Bowl champion. That's all he's allowing them. And I don't think that's a compliment. It is not a compliment. How is that? It's the Peach Bowl. Wasn't it? I even, don't know. I didn't even think it was a New Year's Day bowl when we were going you, even, up. Look, even as a peach in the fruit community, the peach isn't respected. Put that on the poll, Guillermo. You're is right. the peach respected in the fruit community? The most respected fruit is the apple, right? Has to be. Has to be. Right? 
the banana? Oh, I think it's apples, then oranges. Let's do the let's do some fruit rankings. What do we have? Who are the who are the top five in the fruit? And and peach has to peach isn't even others receiving votes, is it? Are you naming twenty peaches before are you naming twenty fruits before you get to peaches? Peach doesn't even come out on the list of best fruits when I Google it. Strawberry, apple, banana, blueberry, grape, blueberry. blackberry, watermelon, pineapple, cherry, orange, That's a strong top ten. Cantaloupe, really? avocado, pomegranate. I mean, I don't see peach anywhere on here. Blueberries! You said avocado? Yeah, avocado's on this list. Avocado's a fruit? Well, it's on this I knew list. tomato was Papaya, a fruit. Avocado's a fruit? fruit? Yeah. Common fig, lemon. So kiwi, you'd rather mango. win the avocado bowl than the peach bowl? Avocado bowl sounds amazing. Tomato, apricot, plum, mango, pitaya. Costs extra at Chipotle. Oh, here it is. Peach found it. Uh, uh. <laughs> Coming up next, Guillermo's top 20 fruits. Don Libertard. I don't know anything. Stugats. I don't remember what I was going to talk about, so in those instances, what I have is a default that just makes fun of Stugats. You're welcome. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. All right, there is what can only be described as a war happening right now on Twitter hmm. and right now on the Internet. And people are writing in, can the butter zombie even name 20 fruits? Kansas football would take the peach bowl as a compliment. Banana for sure. Blueberries, pineapple. People are screaming. How do you, how dare you say the peach is not top five? Dan, French fries are a fruit to you. Mango, highly underrated. The plum, a sleeper f- fruit. Somebody is calling the peach a cornerstone fruit. Have you ever eaten peach cobbler fatty? Bananas are only respected because they're big. Small bananas are laughed at behind their back. Hmm. I have the definitive list here of fruits. It's actually called the definitive list of fruits here. Well, yeah. I thought Billy had the definitive yeah, list. Yeah, Billy does. No, it's authored by Guillermo. It is. I just was letting you guys know that I had it. I didn't know Billy. Very good work. Quick. Guillermo, uh, let's get to your list in a second here. But a texture writes in, stop with the peach slander. Peaches, peaches are well-respected fruits. Another... Texture writes in, the peach is the Mike Trout of the fruits, completely overlooked because peaches are seasonal and subtle the way baseball is slow, unpopular, and boring. Time now for Guillermo's top 20 fruits. Somebody else is also writing here that tomato is legally a vegetable. I don't think that's right. I do think we had an end finally about how a court had to rule on this. So legally it's a vegetable? So it was. so, So this person is saying that the court ruled on this and legally, the tomato is a vegetable. It is, yeah. Legally. Legally, but only legally. <laughs> yeah. Scientifically. Too. Yeah. It had to be classified as a vegetable, I think, because some sort of tariff. Yes. Okay. Back in uh, 1893, U.S. Uh, Supreme Court. It's amazing that you know the legal system so well off the top of your head. Yep. Know my uh, fruit. Guillermo, number 20, the 20th best fruit in the history of fruit is? Raspberry. <laughs> Berry. Nobody pronounces it that way. That's how it's pronounced. Raspberry. Silent P. <laughs> Number 19. Dollars. Pomegranate. <laughs> Number 18. Lime. <laughs> Number 17. Ooh. Kiwi. <laughs> Number 16. Mame. Oh, look at that. Ethnic. Ethnic. 15. Lemon. <laughs> may have done 15 Too twice. Too low. Yeah. That's low. 14. Cantaloupe. Cantaloupe's underrated. Love cantaloupe. Too high. No, cantaloupe. Above lemon? Honeydew is overrated. Cantaloupe is underrated. 13 is a tough one. Number 13. What are you laughing about, Chris? Don't give away the list, you jerk. Number 13. He has has a couple scratched out for 13. Like, this was a big number for him. Let's go through what was scratched out to number 13. Let's see what was scratched out. No, no, I'm not going to do that. Please do. No, because those things moved up, and I don't want to ruin the list. Okay, number 13. I'm sorry. Cranberry. Number 12. Cherry. Cherry's overrated. Yeah, it is. It is, you're right. So is the blueberry, actually. But not muffin. Cherries give me a headache. Blueberries! The blueberry, the blueberry, the blueberry doesn't taste like that. Are they what? They give you a headache? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Anytime I drank like cherry soda as a kid. 
That might be the soda. Right. Nope, regular Coke's fine. It might be all the sugar. I don't think there are actually cherries in cherry Coke, Chris. Um, Dan, at restaurants, cherry soda with the real cherries? Come on. Yeah. Does he look like he stopped eating sugar? I mean, Number 10, Guillermo. Oh, we skipped 11, grapefruit. Sorry. Oh, I don't like grapefruit. That needs to be out of there. Ooh, best LaCroix flavor, though. Grapefruit needs to get out of the top 20. Number 10. Blueberry. Blueberries. Number 9. Starfruit. What? That's an upset. That's an upset. Nobody had star fruit in their top ten. No. no Nobody. No, no, no. Guillermo. Yeah, one person crazy. did. It's wacky, it's wacky Billy <laughs> trying to make a radical list. You're the Skip Bayless of fruit lists. Number eight. Grape. Oh, makes man. wine. Hey, what are you talking about? Grape makes wine. It's got to be higher than that. Yep. Eight. Great it's list. Number seven. Orange. How do you put orange ahead of grape? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This list is also ethnically biased. Number six. Pineapple. Number five. Strawberry. Four. Aguacate. Aqua? Is anyone else surprised to learn that aguacate is a fruit? I did not know that avocado was a fruit. Although if you put, I, it's really because I'd never given it any thought really. Cause if you make me classify it, I wouldn't classify it as a vegetable, but I just don't think, am I, am I the weirdo here? Is not thinking of avocado as a fruit because Roy was ripping me during the break. He's like, I learned that in grade school. Number three, apple. <laughs> Certainly a top three oh, fruit. There was no well, question. Oh, though. Yeah. Oh, I thought yeah. most people that's consensus, Alabama powerhouse. Number two, banana. Um, what's missing? Stugatz, what's missing? There, there has to be a. Has he said banana yet? Yeah, he, he just said, yeah, he just said banana. He just said uh, I have a feeling I know what's missing. I, uh, I don't want to give it up though. I think I know. I, I know Billy pretty well, so I have a feeling. Yeah, I think I know. And the number one fruit, according to Guillermo, is fruta bomba. <laughs> Nailed it. We all had it. Two dollars therapy couch. <laughs> wow, you're hitting him with a double whammy. <laughs> Two dollars, and he has to go to the couch. <laughs> we will check in with the therapy couch at some point during the next segment to hear uh, to hear how it is that Guillermo was doing. The therapy couch for a while had to go away because people were snorting blow off it in one of the rooms here. At the Clevelander? We just think. We just assume that that's what's happening in the rooms off of the bed. What is that number one fruit? I don't know that. Fruta bomba. I mean, doesn't it stand to reason that we should go to break without letting anyone know what the number one fruit was? Not until someone answers me why watermelon wasn't on this list. Was it not on the list? I it was not it was, on this list. I thought list. it was at number eight. I thought I heard I thought watermelon. It was, there. was pineapple there? Or? Yes, pineapple was there. But I heard. I thought I heard watermelon. I did not hear I, I still maintain that the Peach Bowl champion is not a compliment. Aquí lo que importa es el catch. How about the Clementine? I think that I would say what? to anyone that I was trying to dismiss, what have they ever done? Peach Bowl champions. <laughs> Peach Bowl champions? <laughs> Next, you're holding up the line, ma'am. What did you say? You're next in line for the water slide, ma'am. Feet forward and enjoy the ride. Okay, dearie. This does look fun. Whee! Oh, you melted me. I've melted. The Wicked Witch of the West on a water slide? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to Geico. See what you've done. Oh! Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Don Lebatard. Good work today. That was a fun show. Stugatz. It was also intergalactically stupid. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. At Lebatard Show is where you go if you want to vote on the polls. We had a light poll day today. Guillermo's been uh, reeling today. Uh, Fruta Bomba. He went Hispanic there, number one. He omitted watermelon uh chris cody did some research during the break uh learned some hispanic learned some hispanic uh phrases papaya is fruta romba bomba uh, 
that's not the way that you say that. Fruta bomba. Regardless, papaya is number though. one. Yeah. Uh, Two dollars therapy couch. So wow. already uh, Guillermo is on the therapy couch right now. Uh, this is we just check in sporadically with the person who is doing therapy on the therapy couch. Just to see what their thoughts are. They don't know that we're listening. We just listen in as they talk to their therapist. It's probably a federal crime of some sort. Fruits and knows that off the top of their head. So I went on and I started looking up fruits and I tried to, you know, be a little funny and throw in some Hispanic words here and there. Just, you know, randomly play some fruits from place to place and then, you know, they get mad at me. And it's like, are we supposed to be more Hispanic? Are we not supposed to be more Hispanic? People are not getting the joke. Is that my fault? And I just try. And then what do they do? They kick me out of the room and they fine me $2. And every time I open my mouth, I feel like I'm going to be fined $2. It makes me not want to speak anymore, honestly. And a lot of the we'll times, I feel like they're just setting me up for these to fines. To see where he is what in the am proceeding. I supposed to do? Feels like we're do I talk? Up. You want to hear do more? You want to hear more of this right now or you want to check in with him later? It's check really later. At Levitard Show on Twitter is where you go. What do we have on the polls today, Stu guys? Uh, at Levitard Show on Twitter, as Jan, uh, Dan just said, that was me killing time so I can get back to the Twitter page. Uh, if you put a realtor in Bill Belichick's office, would he have a powerful football job within a year we were talking about mike tannenbaum earlier uh in the show he runs the dolphins he once worked under saban and belichick by the way that is the greatest indictment of the cleveland browns they had saban and belichick (laughs) (laughs) they had they had had both of them (laughs) greatest nfl coach and the greatest college coach ever 88 percent of the audience said yes Fines are getting extremely costly. Every day it's $2. And then I have a moral conundrum. Do I pay the fines and honor this system that I don't believe in, or do I not pay the fines? And why are my fines $2? <laughs> At Levitard Show $2? on Twitter. We'll just keep fading him in and out in between questions. Fair. Do we need a Rambo 5? It's going to happen. Rambo 5 is happening. 71-year-old Sylvester Stallone is working on Rambo 5. Yep. 63% of the audience said no. What? I know. What? I can't $2 believe it. means so much more to me than it does to them. $2 is nothing to them. I feel like this is bringing up some anger. Of course there's anger and resentment. <laughs> this isn't the first time they've done this to me. There's something else that you what else you got there, Stu Guts, at Levitard Show? Did you think that Rambo would still be in the game at 71 years old? That's stunning, is That's it not? That's a great question. Is it not? I mean, how, how old are we going to make the action heroes? Like, is this going to be the oldest action hero we've ever had? Yes or no? Ooh. Is that how old is Schwarzenegger? Let me check. That's a very good question. What is well, Clint Eastwood? Is Clint Eastwood done action hero stuff in his seventies and eighties, or does he just do old man get out of my yard? Grand Torino. Arnold is seventy. Yeah, he's seventy. But I don't think Eastwood's done a movie in a very long time, right? He directs movies. I don't he think directs he's... them. He doesn't. Right. But in Grand Torino, he was kind of an action star. Is LeBron a four seed? That's really a one seed. 88% of the audience said yes. Sometimes I just feel like they don't get what I'm going for and they don't get me. On opening day, I took the day off and they kept nagging me over and over and over again. And I was going for a joke. And then Dan, between the two of us, I think gets jealous when other people get attention. So he just started stepping all over the punchline of my joke. It was my moment, finally, my day off. And I dedicated it to them. I didn't even put it in as an off day. I didn't even put it in as an off day. That counted as a work day. It should have. I was working all day. Cost me vacation. It's Is that not the fair. home run call? <laughs> yes. Is he complaining about how I stepped on his on his home run call? Stepped on it. You ate him. All right. Well, let's play that in a second <laughs> at Lebetard Show. They they have compared me to a, a whale breaching uh breaching the ocean and just consuming him as he went out for the first day of the Marlin season, so we could chronicle the historic first pitch of this Marlin season. And then Guillermo got his big moment on doing play-by-play, and I swallowed it. We'll get back to that in a second. Which is more embarrassing, scoring one point in a playoff game or scoring zero points in a playoff game? Well, you know what, though? That one's a tricky one because being a star and scoring one point is the is the way that that one should go. Right, but uh, Pablo on Friday, you were off, said something very funny where, you know, zero happens. It happens occasionally. One means you were actually trying. <laughs> yes, one is <laughs> you embarrassing. You trying to get something, you know? Uh, 80% of the audience said one point. I just don't know what to do anymore. I try, I try, and I try, and it just seems like I'm here to be the butt of everybody's joke. 
They don't appreciate what I'm going for. They don't appreciate my list. They don't appreciate my jokes. They don't appreciate my vacation days. I just, I'm lost, doctor. Right, I don't know what else to do. General lack of appreciation. Two dollars, by the way. <laughs> Find him another two dollars while he talks to his therapist. Tell him he, that. Tell him when he comes out of there that he owes another two dollars. Is that the end of the polls? We have one more. Is it Brett, Brent, or who cares? 85% of the audience said, who cares? Okay, the coach of the uh, Sixers, <laughs> who Stephen A. Smith once fired because he thought the Sixers were going to win, as we all did. Yeah. Everyone thought the Sixers were going to win except for the Celtics. <laughs> Stephen A. can get a coach fired, man. He can. Oh, he can. And that's it. That yeah. concludes the polls for the day. Yeah. Do you believe that, that Stephen A. can get a coach fired? Like you, if you had the same mentality as Stephen A. Like not if, not if, you if got... I had your credibility and power, man, I could really get coaches fired. Like when I, I say fire a coach, the teams laugh at me and they, you know, they, they sign him to a five-year extension. I don't believe that uh, Stephen A. Smith can get coaches fired. I believe public pressure can get coaches fired and that Stephen A. Smith can contribute to that. But if you have any leadership in your front office whatsoever – Public pressure is not something that governs you if if the leadership is any kind of real. And in the case of Stephen A. Smith and a lot of people like him and us, when you make us look bad on our predictions, we'll fire you on the radio. And that's not really the standard. <laughs> that's not the standard we go with in these circumstances on how to get rid of people or not get rid of them. All right. And the wind up and the pitch. Oh, God, a home run on the first pitch of the game. Oh, my God. Oh, Welcome, Derek Jeter. And that concludes our Marlins coverage for the season. I mean, Billy was there and then he wasn't. I'm sorry. It was your big moment.